Welcome to the 2023 Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, filmed on location at the IGFA and brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. You're about to learn from teams of some of the top saltwater fishing pros and how you really glean the most from the Saltwater Sports from the Seminar Series is listen for the little subtleties, the small things that we are doing to put together a great catch or to get a few fish when times are tough out there. So let's get right down to it and start off the Saltwater Sports from the National Seminar Series. Coming to you from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, it's the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Get ready, everybody. Here's George Poveromo. Welcome to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, filmed on location at the IGFA, brought to you by Mako Boats and Bass Pro Shops. Using electronics to locate and catch fish. A very intriguing panel with a lot of cutting edge new items in here. And we're gonna have Captain Corey Crocheter from New England back with us. We have uh, Captain Alan Winzel from South Florida, Florida Keys, and Captain David Wicker, our electronics guru, who hails out of North Carolina. Okay, everything changes so rapidly with electronics. And radar, we've used radar to locate birds. That's what we, we and how that has progressed has been really tremendous. Where the old school, you would have to fine tune your radars. Then all of a sudden you get these companies, say Simrad being one of them, where they have bird mode, where you hit a button and it dials in your radar to locate birds. It's taken the guesswork out of all the fine tuning that we work years to perfect, and now, you know, the average guy now could go out there, hit bird mode, and be effective at locating birds. And when you thought that, say, bird mode couldn't get any better, now Simrad has a more advanced bird mode. Bird mode plus. Bird mode plus. Dave, tell me about it. What, what is different than their standard bird mode versus the bird mode plus? It's, uh, they've added a, a, a little bit more power, a little more technology to able to, to you know, see them further out. Uh, you know, used to the norm was two to three miles. Now you're looking at six to eight miles for birds. Uh, but the, I believe it's the 2000 and the 3000 model uh, halo uh, radar. The dome radar, I don't believe, contains that. Right, it, it, it's always been the open array that really dials into birds in a more condensed signal. It's a the larger, more powerful correct. Uh, antenna system. And the new system is how you could locate birds eight miles away. Now, there's a couple things here. Now, remember, when they're saying eight miles away, they're talking, say, boats like a center consoles where you have the T-top. Now, the higher up you go, the better the you're going to see. Yeah. But this is going to dial into these center consoles, boats, this league here, where you could see now eight miles. You don't necessarily have to just see them and go to them, right? You want to see them and, and understand what they're doing. True. Are they, what direction are they flying? How fast are they flying? Uh, you know, because when you're really fishing with birds, you have to be in position for the birds, right? You just, which a lot of people that we find when we're fishing down in the Keys, is people see the birds and what's the first thing they want to do? You know, right, right, go right into the middle of the bird patch and then that's it, right? They're, they're gone, the fish are down, the birds are gone. But if you're truly using your radar and, and knowing how to fish, well, you really want to figure a way to, um, you know, to intersect with the birds, mm -hmm. right? So if you know how fast they're moving and what direction it is, your ultimate goal is to get in front of them far enough ahead to where you have time to drop your baits in the water and start following that bird. Like we did talk about in the Mahi section is that Ultimately, now we we troll and we keep up with the, the um, school of fish. It's not like the old days where you can just find a fish, drop your motors and put them in neutral and let all the fish come up to you. But in reality, now we have to stay with the school because they're constantly moving. And if you know where they are, where the birds are with the bird mode and anything else, you know, you're, you're ahead of the game. 100%. And on the radar right now, we have some commercials. But we're <laughs> going to come right back to the session on electronics. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We're coming right back at you after a few commercials. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Penn, let the battle begin. Roths, comprehensive oceanographic analysis for fishing. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. Angle, portable fridge freezers and high performance coolers. George will be right back. 
Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Using electronics to locate and catch fish is the session. Corey, up your way too, is finding birds important as it is down our way too? Does uh, radar and finding birds have any place for your type of fishing? Uh, a little bit. We don't use radar as much for that. We use it more for safety because uh, we do a lot of night running and a lot of fog we deal with. Um, so most of the time we're using radar for safety purposes, seeing other boats, seeing channel markers, you know, and stuff like that. And I'll, and I'll just say this, with storms, number one, don't ever get caught in them because of that electricity deal, the cool, meat, and the warm. But if you have to deal with one, don't skirt the edges. That's where the electricity is. If any punch into that, get to that colder air in the rain, there's less chance you get whacked with lightning doing it that. That's just, I had to throw that into the safety. Explain yeah. what active target. I'm hearing more and more about this. Active target sonar now, um, you can literally see the fish swimming under the boat. Uh, you, they, they've got a couple of different varieties. They got transom mounts. Uh, they have uh, uh, the uh, trolling motor mounts. Um, but the way it works, it's the, like the, the transducer is two transducers in one mm -hmm. and you can actually see your fish swimming around. Um, you can, well, if you find a school of bait, uh, you know, you know exactly where they are. You could throw your net right on top of them. I mean, it's so clear you can actually see the net going down over the bait. Mostly, I guess at this stage, correct if I'm wrong, more of our inshore salt water near coastal yeah, right. versus yeah. deeper stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and Alan, again, using fish finders and we're, you know, we're, we're dealing with the radar, what else could you give us in the way of an, uh, an important tip that we've not talked about in, in past electronic sessions? Yeah, well, again, a lot of it is, I mean, this new technology that, that he's, um, you know, Dave's talking about is pretty cool because even on the reefs, right, we have Alan Murata, we have reefs, which, you know, so, side scan was always really cool, but from a layman, it was, to me, it was kind of always hard to read, right? What, what's really out there? You know, you see all this stuff, but really it was, was kind of hard to identify what it was. Uh, with this new technology, I mean, it's almost like you actually see the actual the fish, right? There's actually see the outline of the fish, not so much just a little blurb. Uh, so that's very good. But, you know, further offshore, again, it's a lot of it is, you know, you have to use your electronics. Uh, you use, you know, we've caught so many other fish on spots that we've never seen before just by going to f other places, right? You always go, we'll go dolphin fishing and we'll find a hole that we never saw before. We've never seen any boats on there before. So, of course, you mark that. Um, yeah, the structure scan, it, that just brought a, a whole new ball game. You know, to to it, because I mean, you can find places that you never knew existed. Right. You know, especially if they're off to off to the side, because they're you know you always used to go and, and see what's directly under the boat. And now it's just and even all deep over. water. You know, yep. underneath weed patches and things like that yep. uh, that we've never never really got to see. And now with the sargasm being so much, I mean, those weed patches are you know a mile wide. Mm -hmm. You need to figure out. You know, can you throw a, a, a line in there or not? Now you can go fishing by yourself and not have to throw a scout or run. Or in the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> you know, you look at things in advance, the uh, the charting systems, they send right at CMAP reveal, which is like a uh, bathymetric type read in the bottom where you see the exact type of bottom based on the areas. But we're going to take a commercial break and I want to talk about the trail feature. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We'll be right back after a few commercials. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Suffolk, always use the best line. BMC, your expert in hooks. Williamson Lures for the Pelagic Playground. Starbright, blending technology with performance since 1973. George will be right back. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. We're back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, using electronics to locate and catch fish. And Corey, uh, you and I fished up there, you dialed us in on those bass, and they were in that one zone, and we just marked them blanketing the bottom. It was, it was like ridiculous, and the bite was on. And we had 
the, the, the trail feature. Yep. So when we would get hit, we would come back close to that same line. If not, we would move a little bit too. So how important is the trail for the fishing that you do, be it striped bass, or does it have any relationship to the tuna fishing that you do? Yeah, for striped bass, when you're doing your drifts, it's very crucial. Um, you wanna really know how close you are to the last drift that you did. So like if your drift is off 100 feet, that could be the difference between catching, you know, two fish on that drift or zero fish on that drift. So knowing that you were exactly right where you were on that last drift, or knowing that like, hey, on my last drift, I didn't catch anything. When you could pull up to do your next drift, don't go, don't go to the same spot you started on the last one. Move it over a little bit and then start doing your patterns until you find where those fish are holding on the structure. And what's important to you with your fishery, be it the tunas or the, uh, the striped bass in terms of electronics? What do you look for to being the most important to get you on fish? Target separation. Uh, I want to be able to see the difference. Um, I want to know what kind of bait is underneath the boat. I want to know what kind of fish, what size fish are underneath the boat. Is it, am I looking at a couple of tunas that swam by? Am I looking at a couple of sharks? Was it a pot of dolphins? Was it a big ball of bait that was stuck together? You know, the, all those things make a huge difference in you saying, hey, we should sit here or we should not sit here because I, A, I'm looking at what I think is a fish or I know is a fish. That's and, huge. And that goes to the chirp enhanced transducers, yes. which is what, what three signals that broadcast versus traditional one signal up yeah. and then yes. it gives you that, that separation yes. and all that too. And even items like EPIRBs, uh, have evolved. So the new technology with ACR, not only you have the EPIRB, but you have the AIS blended in. So what that means, you have the normal signal when you send off, goes up to the satellites. Satellite sends to local broad, uh, rescue forces. Now they have AIS technology, and AIS at any boat that has it, which a lot of these large boats have to have it by law, they could see what's in the water, who's in trouble, and not only are you relying now on the search and rescue forces through the satellite, but now the AIS technology that some of these ships in that area could pick up on the signal and actually come and might even give you a quicker rescue if you're in that situation, and they make it for the PLBs as well. So um, that, and in, in my boat too, is uh, if you got room for it, I have a, a, a six-person inflatable life raft. And uh, we sort of joke about that, that um, if we ever get in a situation and something happens to the boat, first thing, swim to the camera boat, because we're mostly <laughs> filming all the time. And if that doesn't work, we'll get out the life raft, pop it open, fire off the eeper, make sure you grab a bottle of Papa's Pilar rum and, and have fun until you get rescued. But well, you do uh, have a tendency to end up in the water, so it helps you. That's only for once, sure. <laughs> and that was with swordfish. I got rocked by a wake on a boat, but uh, we, we, 10 years later, we still talk about it. It's one of my greatest hits <laughs> 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 on that dude, but safety is, is paramount without a doubt. And um, let's talk about, about the entertainment um, segment. Now, Alan, that's really Awesome, big time. Oh, it's, it's amazing that um, what you can now do on in audio, because again, what you're trying to do when you're on a boat, right? It is entertainment, right? You're either entertaining fishing and, um, you know, just having a good time. But the whole part of the audio side has become a big part of fishing uh, and boating lifestyle. I've been spending a lot of time in Europe lately, and I can tell you one thing that these boat builders that are over there, so many of them now want to come to the United States. And the first thing that they ask me is, okay, how do we build a great audio system? Because they think that once they have an audio system, that's going to sell their boats. So, you know, between what we're doing now with, um, you know, with hedge units, uh, Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi, everything involved in the hedge unit, uh, we're also, you know, up in the game to where we have this thing called DSP, which is digital sound processing. And what that simply means is that I can now take a boat in which I could only tune maybe just the high and the, the, the bass on it. Now I can tune every speaker at every location in the boat and create it to where you never have any distortion and all it is is pure sound. So you turn it up as loud as you want because some of these boats now that we're doing, they're 60, 70 mile an hour plus boats. And people always think that, well, hey, I, why bother? I'm not going to hear my stereo in that kind of speed. And they go, well, that's just because you haven't had it done right. You know, it's, it's how you lay the boat out. You make sure that you position speakers correct. Yeah, and we're going to get into that right after the commercial break. We'll be right back after a few commercials. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, the topic, the electronics. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by 
Atlas Tracks, satellite tracking of recreational pleasure boats, supply vessels, and fishing fleets. Columbia Sportswear, stay cool and protected while fishing. JL Audio, ahead of the curve. ACR, building survival products since 1956. Florida Keys and Key West, visit FLAKeys.com. George will be right back. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, the topic, electronics. I'm talking with Captain Alan Wenzel on building a modern, state-of-the-art stereo system right. for a boat. Well, the, the, the key to me is always the subwoofer. Right, the subwoofer is the biggest part where people sometimes get a bad rap with subwoofers. They think that it's only going to be loud music playing obnoxiously. Uh, but in reality, especially in the boat, because the, the frequencies that come out of a subwoofer are the same noises that you need to overcome. Like that, I was talking earlier about the guy wants to do 60 miles an hour but wants to hear his boat. But that wind noise and the engine noise, well, it's that low frequency that you have to overcome. So once you can overcome that with a subwoofer, because they share that same frequency, it can handle a lot of power from your amplifiers, and therefore it just helps the whole system be able to turn up loud. And speaker placement is another big thing. Absolutely. You've got to have the place, right speakers in the right place to get that tone around that boat. Yeah, because you don't really want to have all your speakers in one section, right. and then you have people up in the front you're blasting the guys out in the back and nobody's get to hear it in the front, right? So you always want to set it up to the listening zones, the listening areas. And one other thing dealing with electronics, and it's a very imperative one, is this is an Atlas track boat tracker. I've got one in my boat and you hide it somewhere in the boat. It would be hard for a, a, a criminal to figure out where it's at. And what it does, it tracks the whereabouts of your boat and you have a base office that can monitor all your movements. You can interact this with your home computer to know where your boat is at all times. And it's great because it shows you GPS, it shows you your trails, and you could be alerted to when your boat's being moved or you could disable that feature. And it really works out well. And Atlas Track, they had an incident at a boat dealership up in Fort Pierce where they stole a couple large center consoles and one of them had this device. Long story short, the police caught them based on the device. Right. They were trying to stick these center consoles in the wood and run, and they were picked off on that. Now, what's humorous about this, and the reason I'm cracking up a little bit, is that we ship our boat, the Mark VI, up north for TV shoots. Mm -hmm. And then I get to watch, because the transportation driver from Mako doesn't know I have one, he's in the boat. So you could tell where he's at, and every time he overnights or stops, I'm hoping he's not by some strip club where you see the Mark VI parked out front of a strip club. And I even told him he's going to do that. Put towels over the side of the boat name on that one, too. But it's really, a, it, this is how you prevent your boat theft. You're in the Bahamas or whatever. Most insurance companies now, one, give you a discount if you yeah, have you a tracking. And two, a lot of insurance companies now mandate it if a boat is over a certain size. So the thing is, is that you really want to make sure you get a reputable one and, you know, that these these people are on it. And how are you tracking. outsmart the smarter crooks is you have one live one, get a couple fake ones and put them in obvious positions where they think they have they it found and they knock it, yeah. it off. They still haven't found the real one yet. Yeah. They're easy to hide because you really, you can put them anywhere in your boat because they'll shine right through fiberglass. Yeah. All you got to do is just make sure it's not around any metal. Absolutely. You go back to the trail feature, for example, Corey, you talked about having bad weather and using radar to get through fog. If you have your trail feature and you save these, is you could see exactly where you came out of. So any kind of weather situation, you could dial that and pull that right up and get your boat and you run that same line is going to take you back to where you were when you came out. Yeah. So it's, that's also a safety item too for any kind of navigation at night running back in. You could also pay close reference to that, especially if you're in a different area. And when you're getting closer to shore, coming into a pass or an inlet, you have some really guidance there if you're not really an expert at it. Alan, anything else you want well, to add? Yeah, you talked about the, the bottom of machines with the, the, with the new, uh, what is it called? The active target. Act, no, not the active target. C-Map reveal, the yeah, charts? Yeah, C-Map yes. reveal, the charts. Yeah especially in deeper water, because we do fish a lot of deep water wrecks and a lot of reefs. So a lot of times we target different fish 
in different areas. So, you know, you groupers, you want to be really close to the wreck or the, the reef where like a mutton snap or something like that, you want to be off the wreck in the reef. So there you can actually see it in, in all its glory, the reef, and now you know exactly where to drop your line, much more than you could on just a little um, normal uh, and, w and once you see your bottom and your structure there, that's when I will fall back and, and use my drift track. To, Absolutely. To catch yeah. the drift. And on that note, we're going to drift out. We're out of time on this one. I want to thank Corey Crochetier, Alan Winslow, and David Wicker for that session. You're watching the Saltwater Sports and National Seminar Series. We're coming right back with a totally new topic. There you have it. The Saltwater Sports and National Seminar Series will be right back next week with a totally different episode. If you want a chance to win our Super Grand Prize Mako 17 Pro Skiff Center console, powered by Mercury Outboard, enter the drawing at nationalseminarseries.com. One lucky winner will take home this beautiful Mako boat. Best of luck.